All right, so today we're going to be doing a deep dive into all those BL dramas that are supposed to be coming out in 2025 that everybody's talking about. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've got new pairings, we've got some unique storylines, uh, but we've also got a whole lot of question marks. Yeah, 2025. Right. Like, the year is shaping up to be really interesting for BL. It is. It's uh, There are a lot of titles coming out, yeah. and it really seems like it could be a defining year for the genre as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with that. Yeah. But before we get to all the exciting new stuff, we got to talk about the delays. Oh, yeah. The next Prince. Yeah. It's supposed to come out in 2023, then it was going to be 24, now it's 2025. Uh-huh. And Love Upon a Time has had its own set of issues, too, with James leaving and having to recast somebody new. Yeah, I think a lot of fans were really looking forward to seeing James in that role. Yeah, me too, for sure. Especially you. Uh, well, yeah, I was actually a little bummed about the casting change at first. Oh, really? But then I started thinking about it. And you know, what a parallel world plot yep. with a new cast dynamic could actually end up being a really good thing. Yeah, I agree. I think sometimes those unexpected changes can lead to something even better. Right, exactly. And maybe they'll actually be able to refine those special effects. Yeah, give them time. Give him time to get that world building perfect, Uh you know, because it is a parallel world and that's something that you don't see all the time in BL. Right. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to it now. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. But speaking of mysteries, uh, Mm. there's one show in particular that is driving fans crazy and me included. Oh, yeah. What is the deal with We Joe Bakery? Oh, tell me about it. They finished filming. Yeah. But there's still no release date. Yeah. And on top of that, what's going on? You've got the main actors. Right. They're no longer under the same management. So was there some sort of like behind the scenes? Right. What happened? Contractual disagreement. Yeah. Creative differences. Nobody knows. Yeah. They're very hush hush. Hush hush. Yeah. It's like a puzzle that everybody wants to solve. I know. I have a feeling that this one could maybe be a late 2024 surprise. Oh. You know, maybe like a little holiday. A holiday treat. A holiday treat. It'll be nice. But if not, I think it's definitely going to be an early 2025 release. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Now let's shift gears for a second and talk about sequels. Mm. Okay. Sequels are a little bit hit or miss. Yeah. Pit Bab Season 2 is going to be released in 2025, but they haven't even started production yet. Oh, wow. I am really curious to see where they take the story. Yeah. They said they're going to delve deeper into the characters' relationships and their backstories. Mm -hmm. But with no filming, I guess we're going to have to wait a while to find out. Yeah, we'll have to be patient. Patience, yeah. But while we're waiting for Pit Bab, there's another show that's getting a lot of buzz. Z-Viver? Yeah. A horror BL. That's a unique combination. Yeah, I'm not the biggest horror fan, but the fact that it's BL, I don't know. It's intriguing. I'm a little intrigued. It's a bold move, for sure. Yeah, it really speaks to how much BL is changing. Right. That they're experimenting with these different themes and genres. Yeah. And think about it, combining the intensity of horror with all the emotion of BL (sighs) could make for a really interesting viewing experience. That's true. Yeah. Okay, I'm willing to give it a shot. Good. And it's not just the horror element, it's the cast. Oh, yeah. This cast is stacked. It is. So that always adds to the anticipation. Definitely. Okay, now speaking of exciting concepts and fresh pairings, have you seen the premise for eight hours? Oh, yeah. It's supposed to be like a suspense thriller yeah. that keeps you guessing. Nah. So who doesn't love a good mystery, right? Oh, right. And there's another one that's caught my eye, Spare Me Your Mercy. Ooh. It's got a brand new BL couple. Okay. And the genre is something I haven't really seen before. Oh, really? In BL. Okay. It's like a high stakes heist, a forbidden romance, and lots of danger. Wow, that sounds yeah. really intense. It's up- yeah. And the anticipation for these new pairings is always so high. You know, yes. discovering that chemistry between the actors. Yes. That's part of what makes BL so great. Totally. And with a plot like that, this one could be a real hit. I'm already hooked. I am too. Okay, but you know what else has me really excited? That's that. Saint is making his acting comeback oh. in My Sweetheart JN. Oh, that's great. And it's being produced by his own company. Oh. So you know it's going to be high quality. Yeah, definitely. His return to acting is like a real treat for fans. Oh, yeah. He's so talented and passionate about storytelling. Uh-huh. And I think this project is going to be really special. I think so, too. Okay, now let's talk about the elephant in the room, Red Pea Fowl. Ooh. There's all this talk about it being canceled. Oh. But nothing's been confirmed. <laughs> and it is agonizing waiting to hear what's going to happen. Right. Especially when you're so invested in the show. It really shows how dedicated 
BL fans are to hold on to that hope, even when it looks like things might not work out. Yeah, it's amazing how powerful fan support can be. It really is. Speaking of shows that have us on the edge of our seats, let's quickly run down some other titles that are generating a lot of buzz. Okay. So we have I Am the Most Beautiful Count, which sounds like a historical drama. Uh -huh. And then there's Chimera, the pilot episode, was incredible. Yeah, it got a lot of buzz online. People are so excited for it to come out. Yeah. And then there's Happy Ending, which reunites the couple from Kin Portia. Oh. Those reunion dramas always... They pull you back in. Yeah, they have that special appeal because yeah. you're like, oh, what happened after? Happily ever after? Exactly. Okay, and then we have a few more intriguing titles. We have <laughs> My Golden Blood, a vampire BL with a new couple. Ooh. Austin's Love, an office romance based on a Japanese series. Nice. And Theme Per, another office romance. Oh, wow, another one. But you know what really catches my eye? What's that? Are all these titles that just by their names spark your curiosity? Uh. The X Morning Allure of the Siren Red Envelope. Lover Mermaid, the series. Lover Mermaid, yes. Dr. Mind Sweet Toot Dentist. Oh my God. Goddess bless you from death. It's like this treasure trove of BL waiting to be discovered. I know. So many diverse genres and storylines. Oh. It really shows how much DL is expanding. It really does. It's a really exciting time to be a fan. It is, but with all this anticipation right. and all this excitement, yeah. it kind of makes you wonder what kind of impact this BL boom is going to have on the future of BL content. Right, like will it lead to more innovation and creativity or will the pressure to produce all this content right. affect the quality? Yeah, that is the question. It is. So stick with us as we dive into the potential opportunities and challenges that this BL boom might bring. Yeah, and what it could mean for the future of the genre. Because this is only the beginning. It is. It really does feel like we are like on the edge of like a whole new chapter for BL. It does. Isn't it? There's so much like energy around it and all these new ideas and talent coming in. It really does feel like a turning point. Yeah. I, so we've kind of like skimmed the surface on some of these upcoming dramas, but I want to dig a little deeper into a couple that I'm really excited about. Okay. So first up, My Golden Blood Vampires, Romance, Forbidden Love. I mean, oh yeah. What more could you ask for? That's a good one. Right. And and it's interesting, isn't it like how BL is really kind of like yeah, branching out into all these different genres? Yeah. You know, yeah. fantasy, horror, historical drama. It's like it's a, really cool. You're taking all the elements that we love about BL and then they're weaving them into these like really unique yeah, world exactly, and it keeps it fresh and unexpected for viewers. Exactly, and my golden blood has me hooked for another reason. Okay, so I did a little bit of research, uh -huh. and the source material, like the web novel that it's based on, okay, was super popular online, and the fans were obsessed with the main couple and the whole forbidden love thing. I see. So there's already all this excitement and anticipation for the drama. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, when a drama is adapted from Something that already has a following. Yeah. It comes with a built-in fan base. Yeah. But it also so, means that there's a certain level of expectation. Oh, totally. From the fans. Yeah, they've got to stay true to the original story. Right, but also bring something new. Yeah, you don't want to alienate the fans of the source material. Right. But you also want to create something that's, you know, unique and... Exactly. And enjoyable for a new audience. Yeah, it's a tough balance. It is. It's a delicate balance. Yeah. So speaking of adaptations... Yeah. Austin's Love is another one that's on my radar. Oh, that's right. It's a remake of a Japanese series, right. which is an unusual NBL. Right. But what's cool about this is that the original was known for its portrayal of like office romance. Oh, interesting. And it wasn't just about the steamy scenes. It was about like navigating love and professional boundaries uh -huh. in the workplace. Yeah, office romances are a popular trope in BL. They are. But you're right, the Japanese series really had like a yeah. depth. Yeah, like it really explored like ambition and loyalty and like how to balance yeah. your personal and professional life. Exactly. And so the challenge for the BL adaptation is to capture those emotions, but also you know, tailor it to a BL audience. Right. So it's exciting because it's like a chance to revisit a story we already love. Yes. But with a new perspective. Exactly. I can't wait to see how they handle it. Me too. Speaking of revisiting stories that we love, 
Red Envelope has everybody talking because it brings back Bailin and Kipi. That's right. From a previous series. I love the reunion drama. Oh, they're so good. There's something really heartwarming about seeing a couple story continue. Yeah, it's that sense of nostalgia. And, you know, you already have that emotional connection with the characters. Mm, exactly. Mm -hmm. But the key, I think, to a really good reunion drama is to give the fans what they want. Yeah. But also give them a new story. Yes, you don't want it to feel like a rehash. Right. It has to have its own arc. And the characters need to, you know, yeah. face new challenges. Exactly. And that's where the writers come in. The writers are so important. Yeah. They have to find a way to make it familiar and fresh and yeah. keep the relationship moving forward. Yes. And that's not easy to do. It's a tough job. It is a tough job. Yeah. Okay. Shifting gears again, let's talk about a drama that I think is going to be visually stunning. Okay. Lover Mermaid, the series. No. A love story between a human and a mermaid. I mean, just the underwater scenes alone oh my gosh. are going to be amazing. I know. If they can pull it off. It could be incredible. Yeah. And there's so much you can do with the story, too. Oh, yeah. Because there's all the mythology and mm -hmm. folklore yeah. surrounding mermaids. I'm hoping for something like whimsical and romantic yeah. and adventurous. But you know what? There's another show I want to talk about. Okay. What's that? Chimera. Oh, yes. It's the one where the pilot episode just blew everybody away, uh, and people have been waiting for it to be released. Yeah. But there have been some delays. Oh, no. Which, you know, I try not to worry too much when shows get delayed. Right. Because sometimes it's actually a good thing. Yeah. Sometimes it means they're taking the time yeah. to really make it great. To make sure everything's perfect. Yeah. To fine-tune the script, to get the visuals right. Yeah. Maybe even reshoot some scenes. I would so much rather wait for something that is good yeah. than have something be rushed. Totally. Quality over quantity yep. every time. Just always. Now, before we move on, there's one more I want to mention that I thought was really interesting. Okay. Goddess Bless You from Death. Ooh. Just the title itself. Yeah. You know, it makes you think about sure. fate and spirituality and... Ooh, reincarnation. Yeah. Uh -huh. Maybe even reincarnation. Now, that's something you don't see a lot of in BL. Yeah. Imagine... The possibilities, like past lives, yeah. intertwined destinies. Second chances at love. Yeah, it could be really intense. So intense. Yeah, it's a bold concept. It is. It'll be interesting to see how they balance those kind of heavier themes Yeah. with the romance and lightheartedness that you usually see in BL. Right, but I think it has the potential to be yeah. really captivating. Picture. And I'm all about BL dramas like pushing the boundaries and exploring mm -hmm. new things. Yeah. And that reminds me of the other show we talked about, Z Beaver. Oh, yeah. The horror one. Yeah. They both seem to be dealing with those, like, darker, more supernatural yeah. themes. I think it shows that people want to see BL explore a wider range yeah. of genres and emotions. It's like the genre's growing up a little bit. Yes. You know, moving beyond those typical high school and university settings. Yes. And telling more complex stories. I love that. Yeah. And that brings us back to the bigger question of, like, what does all of this mean? For the future of BL, yeah. we've seen so much creativity and experimentation just in these 2025 releases. Uh -huh. Like, what other changes are going to happen? Right. Will we see more diversity, more global collaborations, higher production value? It's exciting to think about. It is. But, you know, with more popularity comes more attention. Right. You know, there are some challenges to think about, too. Yeah. Like, what happens if BL gets too commercialized? Oh, yeah. What if it starts to feel like every story is the same? Right. Will it lose its authenticity? Yeah. Those are all valid concerns. They are. And I think it's a discussion worth having. It is. Yeah. So let's dive into those potential opportunities and challenges that are ahead for the BL genre. Yes, because this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Yeah. So we've talked about a lot of different stuff, like mermaid romances, yeah. vampire BL. Uh-huh horror, yeah. delays, all kinds of things. But now I want to like circle back to that bigger question. What does all of this popularity, what does this BL boom right. really mean for the future of BL as a genre? Yeah, that's the big question, isn't it? It is. And, you know, it's exciting. Yeah. But are there downsides? That's a good question. To this popularity. Yeah, I mean. Because it can't all be good. Right. Think about it like anything else. Yeah. The more popular something gets, the more people want to you know, right. get involved. Right. And that can be great for exposure and money. Uh-huh. But it also means more people are trying to control what happens. Yeah. And we're already seeing some people online talking about how 
BL is getting too commercialized. Oh, yeah. Or that it's losing its authenticity. Right, and that's what I'm worried about. Yeah. I don't want BL to turn into something that's just about making money. Right. You know, because I think part of what makes it special is its heart. Mm-hmm. It's willingness to explore, like, different kinds of stories that aren't mainstream. Right. Those raw emotional stories. And I think the question is, how do we keep that as BL becomes more popular? Right. How do we preserve that? Yeah. And I think part of it is supporting the creators who are doing things differently. <laughs> yeah. Telling stories that are unique. Yeah. And showing characters that we don't always see. Okay. So what can we as fans do? Well, I think it's about more than just watching the shows. Mm-hmm. It's about engaging with the community. Oh. Amplifying those voices that need to be heard. Yeah. And holding creators accountable. Yeah. You know, making sure they're being responsible with their stories. Right. Because fan power is real. Oh, it is. Especially in BL. Yeah. Look at what happened with mention of BL show saved by fan campaigns. Yeah. The fans spoke up. Yeah. And they changed what happened. Exactly. They saved the show. Yeah. And that's the power that fans have. Yeah. But let's be realistic. Not all fan interactions are positive. True. We see some pretty toxic behavior online. People getting harassed. Mm -hmm. People trying to censor things. Yeah, it's like two sides of the same coin. Yeah. That same passion that can fuel those amazing fan campaigns right. can also lead to negativity. Okay, so what do we do about that? I think it's about remembering mm. that it's okay to have different opinions yeah. and to disagree. Yeah. But we have to do it respectfully. Yeah, and I think sometimes we forget about the creators. Oh, yeah. Like the writers, the directors, the actors. Right, they're the ones making the shows. They are. And with this demand for more BL, Uh huh. they could easily get burnt out. Yeah, they need time to be creative. Yeah. They need the resources to make good content. Yeah, if things are rushed just to, like, capitalize on the trend. Right. That's not good. No, it's got to be about quality. Quality, yeah. not quantity. Exactly. So it seems like the future of BL is kind of like this yeah. open book. There's a lot of potential. Yeah but also a lot of things to be careful of. Right. We have to be responsible Mm -hmm. and make sure that BL continues to grow in a positive way. Yes. And I think that's up to all of us. Yeah. Fans, creators, everyone. So as we wait for all these 2025 dramas, let's remember to be respectful. Uh Let's support the creators who are trying new things. And let's keep talking about the future of BL. And most importantly, keep watching. Yes, keep watching. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive. Me too. It was fun. I know. I always learn something new. Me too. And who knows? Maybe we even sparked a new obsession or two for you. Fingers crossed. Yeah, keep those watch lists updated. Uh Keep your hearts open. Yeah. And until next time, keep exploring the wonderful world of BL.